Hey guys, so I was getting some really good lighting here and right now I think the sun is already starting to go yeah. down. So Bye. here's London. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> She's um, we're kind of at the witching Bye. hour of our day. Bye. So I'm already like, Bye. don't know what to Bye. do with her and it's almost that time to start cooking. Bye. So I think I'm going to break out the uh, rice sensory bin that I have for her this week. Um, it's been helping a lot for kind of that time of the day where it's like dying down and um, we just need something to do. So uh, welcome to my 13 week update. It's been a while since I filmed my last pregnancy video and so I have a lot to update you guys on and I hope that this video is very informative especially for first-time moms um, it's primarily why the reason I started these videos because um, the first time around for me I found YouTube very helpful especially on this journey um, to, uh, to a home birth uh, it's a very different field or a different um, journey so I thought that I would kind of give some more information on kind of what the um, appointments look like and what is kind of required of me uh, now so I'm gonna backtrack to 11 weeks because that is when you have your uh, NT scan appointment and you uh, typically get some blood work done so for those of you who do not know what an NT scan is that's the nuchal translucency scan so basically they do a sonogram of your belly um, of the baby and they measure the space at the back of their neck and if it's a lot thicker um, than the specific measurement that they're looking for, I forget what it is, then there's a possibility that your child will um, be born with some sort of abnormality or disability. Um, so uh, it's a very serious appointment and thankfully for us it went Mommy. well. The baby passed Mommy. the test. Mommy. Uh, okay, so that's the NT, the NT scan and then there's some blood work where they just take out some blood in your arm and then they put it on like these four little dots in a paper and they also take the tube as well and they basically use the blood work to also um, detect abnormalities. Basically, I think there's the trisomy 18 and the trisomy 21. Um, so they check to make sure that your baby does not have um, those things as well so I have not gotten the results for that back and I am almost 14 weeks um, so I have to call and make sure that they submit that stuff to my midwife so basically my midwife sends me off for these specific appointments to an imaging or yeah a place where they do something. and then the results go back to her because she doesn't do any of that stuff so um, it's not that bad it's in the city so that is uh, 11 weeks. As far as symptoms at 11 weeks, I still have been, or I still was very tired at 11 weeks. Um, and what else? Food aversions are still, I'm still weird with food. There's like certain foods that I do like the smell, don't like the smell of, and, but it's nothing severe or anything like that. It's just kind of like annoying. Um, to me and my husband apparently <laughs> um, okay so now to 13 weeks at 13 weeks I was supposed to see my midwife at her office downtown um, however there was like a mishap and she didn't realize that I was supposed to see her for that day so I kind of went down there all the way down there with the baby um, However, since we know each other and she's been to my house before, usually there's a, a home visit starting at 36 weeks because you're bigger and they need to check out the house. But I'll get to that at a later time. Um, so anyway, so she decided to make it up to me that she was going to come do the appointment at my house. So that was so helpful so I don't have to go back over there. So she came and we kind of just talked because that's what midwives do. You just talk about your life. 
um, how are you feeling? How is this pregnancy different than the last one? And basically, the biggest question she asked me was, how am I feeling um, about a home birth now with the second one um, because of the transfer uh, the first time? So I told her basically how I was feeling. I kind of feel good about it. I basically have decided that if, you know, if I'm not progressing as fast again, then I will just possibly give up sooner than I did last time, but we'll see. Um, every pregnancy is different, every birth is different, so we'll see what happens. But I'm feeling pretty good about that, so she liked my answer. Just wanted to make sure that I didn't have any anxiety or certain like negative feelings about it, like starting off, because then we would work on um, talking that out, of course. Uh, what else? She, we kind of just like re went over like what, how I was like post birth. So like post birth, I had lost a lot of blood and I needed iron supplements. I'm back. Um, my phone died because, well, it didn't die. It just, um, the video space got filled up. Okay. <laughs> So I was talking about iron. Um, so she suggested that I get an iron supplement this time around in addition to my prenatals. And um, so I think I took the Floridix post birth. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase that. What? Okay, I'm having technical difficulties. So hopefully this will last long. And you can also watch London making a mess over there. Mm-hmm. She's putting all the puzzles all over the floor. Anyways, so yeah, I'm going to take the Floridex Iron Supplement. I have to buy it. She said it'll help with energy as well. So um, I don't think you need to get an iron supplement unless it's recommended by your midwife or uh, OBGYN or your doctor. So um, yeah, I also wanted to talk about sleep. My sleep has been a little bit different. Um, my husband's been away also, so I don't know if maybe like him not being in the bed, just I can't sleep good. But from 3.30, I, I wake up at 3.30 like hungry. Some nights I don't wake up hungry, I just wake up. But I woke up at 3.30 hungry and then um, I am awake till like 5 or 5.30 and then she wakes up for her day at 6 or 6.30. Like she's just up. Like we are up for the day that early so I'm usually really exhausted I think a lot of the fatigue has to do with the timing the time that we're waking up so um, that's what's happening now oh so there's this really cool thing Daddy, that midwives have I do, I do that oh bang I'll take it out for you So it's like a little portal where they keep all your records and where you basically upload things for them, uh, like for insurance wise or just like to update you. They give you like a whole list of things that you have to do throughout your pregnancy. Here you go, baby. You're welcome. They give you a whole list of things that you have to do at, you know, uh, 13 weeks, 20 weeks, or whatever. So it's really cool, and you can log in whenever you'd like, and you can see what your midwife has updated. You can also message her through there, uh, or I just text my midwife. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but she's really cool like that. So I just text her sometimes. Like, the other day I was worried about how many blocks I carried her while she was asleep, and I was, like, freaking out that I put on too much, I carried too much weight. Um, and I just text her like, am I okay? Like, do you, should I not be picking her up, etc. So, I just text her. And, not to make this video too long, I just kind of wanted to suggest some books. The first time around, I really did a lot of reading. This time around, uh, I'll just look through the books and kind of refresh my memory. Because I did read mostly all of these stories in the books. So, um... If you're choosing a home birth or if you just want to explore the realm of midwifery, then I really suggest you purchase the Spiritual Midwifery book. It looks like this. I don't know if there's been any updates, but this is by the fourth edition. 
by Ina Mae Gaskin. She is an amazing midwife. So many people look up to her. And out of all the things I've read, like she just seems really amazing. There's a short documentary on her as well. And basically how she started her midwif midwifery journey. And she basically started it out in a van, like a hippie van and just went around to different um i don't know if different countries but she just they just drove around different states her and her team in this this cool hippie van and people would just give birth in her van um until she started a birth birthing center which i think i forget i haven't refreshed my memory but she has a huge birthing center somewhere in the states and people would fly out to go give birth there the bug went out the window. Yay! We've been we've been looking at a bug like for the past half an hour. I guess it went out the window since I opened it. Um, so basically spiritual midwifery speaks a little bit about Ina May and how she got started, and then it gives you basically a wonderful overview of all these different kinds of births. It doesn't have a lot of pictures in it, but um, I guess it does. So basically, it's like women in labor and the power of labor and love. And it speaks about vis visualization. It talks to you. It basically gives you like a lesson. It's called instructions to midwives. So basically, it's like... Mommy, if you were mommy, uh, taking lessons mommy. to be a midwife, that's a uh, macaroon. Um, it basically gives you like a basis of all the things they learn as well. So it'll tell you about um, the womb, the mommy, the pelvis, mommy. the vagina, about the birth canal, just so many, so many things. It is so nice to like just have an idea of what's going on mommy, with your body mommy, and your baby. Mommy. Anyways, this is an amazing book. Get this. Anime also has different books, different series. And this is another great one, Guide to Childbirth. It kind of um, gives you more real life stories from different women. And their... Please stop. And their births and... It actually makes you really emotional and kind of visualize what you might want your birth to look like, your birth environment to look like or feel like. And um, yeah, it's really good stuff. A lot of good material. It talks about sex during birth, I guess. Well, not during birth, before birth. Um, it talks about the stages of labor. And it talks about V-backs, cesareans, and a whole bunch of other great, great stuff. And it's so simple to read. It's in this uh, smaller book. The other one's pretty big. This one's small. And they have a breastfeeding, guide to breastfeeding as well, which I didn't get. And I think if I would have gotten it, I would have been a little bit more informed about breastfeeding. But thankfully, I am, after all her tongue-tied stuff, we are successful still successfully nursing and we are on the way to weaning just because it hurts um mommy, well it mommy, hurts when she first latches so i am using seven wonders oh. miracle lotion and it has nothing to do with mommy. stretch marks however it has seven natural oils that do help with stretch marks and 14 herbs so i don't really recommend the lotion honestly I am gonna go back to the oil that is what I used the first time around and I ended up only getting one big stretch mark one little one and then one that's like tinier smaller um, but and the lotion kind of or maybe it's just because smells are bothering me but the, the lotion kind of smells stronger or a little more weird my husband doesn't like it he doesn't like the oil one either it's like a pina colada smell but like a fake pina colada smell this is all natural except that it has an added fragrance which kind of sucks I would prefer not to 
the fragrance not to be there. But if you're not um, sensitive to smells, I do suggest you buy the oil. And this is what it looks like. And she just threw a book out the window. And that is my cue to go. Can you say bye? Bye. Come here. Say bye.